Welcome. So today uh, we are going to take on what we had left in the last lecture and that was on activations. So one of the whole aspect which you understood around with those activations was to find out where an object is located on an image. And today we are going to take down another uh, uh, breakthrough which came up and it has some sort of a uh, basis built up on top of your activation maps and this is called as region proposal networks. So what they essentially do is uh, these are networks which while they can classify an uh, image they can find out uh, or they can classify an image into multiple classes whether multiple classes of objects are present in the image or not. On the other side of it, it can also point out exactly where that object is present. Now this is this might sound something similar to an activation uh, map over there or an activation pooling where uh, you could actually find out uh, as a hotspot localization on uh, a different kind of a probability on the whole uh, area over the image where a particular object is present. Now if we come down to these kind of region proposal networks and here what happens is that you start getting down a region proposal or which is more of as a rectangular bounding box and these kind of bounding box can be present at different regions of the image. Now say that uh, one image has uh, a small boy who is holding a banana in his hand and uh, he's sitting uh, in a boat. Now you basically have three objects and this uh, whole image when it's given down for classification and if your system is permitting, permitting you to do a multi-hot classification or uh, it can, can give down more than one classes as the number of uh, class outputs over there then it will basically be giving you all the three classes. So there would be a, bo a boy, there would be a boat and there would be a banana over there. Now, uh, if I ask you to exactly find out where is that banana located, where is the boy located, where is the boat located, then that is a problem which comes down into your region proposal networks. Now, these build up heavily on top of the features which are learned down for your uh, classification itself and use them for doing it out. So let us uh, do a brief uh, recap of what we had learnt about in our uh, earlier discussion with activation maps. Now the whole idea was that uh, if you have a particular action or it can be even an object class then where is that object class present. So if I was asking you about this action called as brushing teeth then where which particular parts of the image would signify something which is associated with brushing of a teeth or if I um, ask down to point down cutting trees then where what particular actions or uh, different zones on that image would be uh, something which would be uh, pertinently referring to a cutting of a tree as an action. Now how it was doing was quite straightforward that you had your image and then you had your convolutional neural network created down for classification. Now just before uh, linearizing and flattening out all the convolution uh, layers over there, so at the last point what you do is whatever responses come down as convolutional results, you flatten and get them into a linear structure and then this uh, structure is fed down into subsequent la layers of a fully connected neural network and to get down an output. Now here what we do in this case is that uh, you just do subsequent convolutions and then at the last layer where you get down different uh, channels coming out of it, you actually average out each of these channel to come down to an average value which is represented as the value of this neuron over here and then uh, you just do a classification over here. Now with this classification learning part over here is what will be changing down these different weights and the weights get adapted accordingly. Now that as and when these weights are getting adapted over there, so what you end up getting is uh, each channel has some sort of a relevance associated to a particular object which it is classifying. So as in over here if I am taking this class as an Australian terrier then uh, certain number of weights will be coming as high, some of them will be coming as low, some may even go down as negative weights as well. Now uh, if I take all of these weights and try weighing down each of my channel outputs and now if this convolution was, uh, so there can be two kinds of convolution over there, either you are re reducing the xy or the spatial size of the input image or uh, you are preserving it as it is. So if you are doing with strided convolutions or with max pooling kind of an operation then your spatial size of the image is going to get reduced. However on the other side of it where uh, you are not going to have any kind of a max pooling operation or you do not have a multi stride, you are, you are just convolving with a stride of 1 and up adding appropriate paddings over there. Then the resultant xy size of what comes out as the final activation is uh, going to be the same as the xy size of the image itself. Now in either of these cases what you can do is uh, you can basically weigh down each of these activation maps which comes out over here which is the result of convolution. 
So there will be n number of convolution kernels and each of them is going to produce one 2D map coming out. Now if you weigh each of these 2D map with these weights and uh, then combine it out then for a particular uh, classification problem say this is for an Australian terrier you find out what region of the image is going to look at it. But then this does not give you a bounding box that is a major problem which comes down over here is that you get some sort of uh, probability given down on the pixels over there but if I ask you that can you give me a bounding box so that I uh, segment out only this rectangular region and uh, I have one object represented only within this rectangular region. So that is something clearly which does not happen within an activation map and that is the basis of what we do with this region proposal network. So this is based on a paper which was published in 2015 in uh, NIPS. Uh, over there and uh, so what we are going to do today is uh, a network which is called as the faster RCNN. Now there were certain computational uh, tricks applied over there as well as the model was made simpler and it was found out that even with this simpler model it was working out much better and much faster and that is the faster RCNN model. So what it does is uh, it, it solves out two problems uh, together, one is it does the object detection in real time as well as it also finds out where the object is located or the region proposal over there. So these are the two things which we will be doing. Now as it goes down and it takes its uh, basis is, is something which is historically known as a scale space theory. Now typically say I can have my image and then uh, if I go down via some convolutions over there then I would come down to something which is called as a feature space. Now uh, if you go back to week 1 of our lecture then uh, you can pretty much recall then we were doing down some kind of uh, uh, feature based learning over there and what it was essentially trying to solve is that if you have an image and I try to compute per pixel certain extra attributes based on the neighborhood around that particular pixel over there then that is what is cumulatively termed as um, just a feature coming up. Now here. Uh, one thing can happen is that if I am densely computing the features per pixel over there then I get down a feature map uh, whose xy size is the same as the x comma y size of this image over there. Now this image can also be scaled down which is uh, you can reduce the size of the image over there. So you can have a scale reduction on both the directions by half which will make the whole area or the total number of pixels reduced by one fourth. You can go down even further say if I make all both the directions over there one fourth then my total number of pixels or my area wise reduction is coming down to one sixteenth of my area. Now accordingly as I come down to this lower area I can still be computing out my features and they are also informative features over there. So this kind of a mechanism is where uh, say there is a as in you see a horse and a dog. Now the horse and a dog can be even smaller in size over here and still how do you figure it out. So that is something which this scale space theory deals with. Now on the other side of it what I can do is I can find out another alternative option in which what we do is you have this image and when you are computing out these features you always take a uh, you take a variable window size over there. Okay. Now one thing is uh, if I compute it on a pixel by pixel basis and get my uh, feature map coming up over there then my xy resolution of my feature map is the same as that of the image. Now if I do a stride of 1 or a stride of 2 over there and try to do it down then the xy size of my feature map is going to be 1 fourth of the xy size of my image. Now if I compute the same features with a stride of say 4 then it is going to have a area wise reduction or a number of pixel wise reduction of 16 factor over there. Now these are important now as, as I also look down into my reduction over there so if I am taking down multiple strides uh, I would still like to encapsulate as much as majority of neighborhood information and that would mean that my window size of my feature detector or my uh, encapsulator over here also needs to be really wide and really bigger. So that is uh, what we have over here so if you are looking down at reducing our feature uh, map size to smaller and smaller then we should have uh, a bigger size window coming down as and when. Now this is one side of it where you have feature computations which are dense at, at every region over there. Now the other point over there is what is your uh, multiple reference proposals over there. So what this multiple reference proposal basically says out is that you can have one neighborhood over there but then instead of taking only this fixed neighborhood you can also think of taking a few neighborhoods around this neighborhood. So if I am taking a small 5 cross 5 
region in order to compute certain feature then in this earlier case i would be having a 5 cross 5 region i will be having a 7 cross 7 i will be having a 11 cross 11 these kind of regions but here if i take a 5 cross 5 region now on that 5 cross 5 region on the top and bottom i can take a few more regions or i can take some narrower region over there and then these will act as multiple references which come down now typically when we solve down a cnn kind of a model that is something which relies on these kind of uh, approaches over there so what essentially we are doing is um, you have your image and then you are convolving you are doing a max pooling which is reducing the size and then subsequent convolutions and going on based on whether you have residual connections you have dense residual connections you would see these sampling operations bringing down your features at different level of hierarchy but nonetheless this does not look at different uh, neighborhoods around that region over there it is just a few block of pixels which gets keeps on getting reduced and your features are deduced now this other point where you can have multiple reference frames or multiple reference blocks in order to infer about the object present in that image is what is the basis for region proposal networks so let us get into the basic architecture which uh, this particular model says so what you do is essentially you have a CNN so you start with an image you have your convolution layers over here which is within your CNN you take it out now your CNNs are going to give you certain feature maps okay now these feature maps are nothing other than just uh, activations associated with each channel so if your output over there has uh, some six channels or maybe 16 channels or 256 channel then for a given pixel location if I am considering along this number of channels over there then any given pixel is represented as uh, this number of channel times dimensional feature vector so say I, I take down uh, my linet so my linet is going to have six channels in the first convolution kernel so essentially any pixel gets convolved over there by six different uh, convolution kernels and that will result into six channels of output coming down now if I take a given pixel on my channel space on on the activation space of my first convolution layers output so and that that can actually translate down to a pixel on my image as well now this pixel on the six channels over there is going to be represented in terms of a six dimensional uh, feature vector and that is this feature map which comes down over here now based on this feature map what we try to do is we try to come up with another mechanism of learning down to get down these kind of proposals generated okay so here what it's going to do is it will take down a few uh, random guesses initially about some randomized boxes and then based on the features which are computed within these boxes so there will be a bunch of pixels which are present within this box now it will take out an average value or variance or or it can even take down all the features over there now this dimensional feature vector which is there present within this box is what is going to say what is the object present within that box so essentially if i have a scene I try to divide it down to different number of tiled out region they can be uniform tiles they can be overlapping non overlapping uh, multiple different different kinds of them so that is that is pretty much up to the user how they would try to do it. and then within each of these blocks based on the uh, feature present in this feature map it is going to say what is the kind of an object present within that block ok now once it has set out that part so what you can do is you can take these region proposals together along with the feature maps and put it down into another classifier over here and this is a fully connected network so essentially you have a network where your input image goes you have a few convolutions going down over there then as a result of this convolution you chunk out certain part and truncate it into a feature uh, and into a region proposal network you get some region proposals coming out you take the other arm from all of your features and then you do a final classification of what is present on the scene ok now uh, uh, this is essentially the mechanism of what we are looking down at so essentially you have your convolutional feature maps and then if you take one particular window then you get down say over here if I have 256 channels uh, on my convolution then it is going to give me a 256 dimensional vector corresponding to any one of these pixels now if I want to take this 3 cross 3 pixel region then I can take an average value over there so that that is also pretty much well and good for my purpose now that I have this average value of it taken down I have this 256 dimensional intermediate representation now from here I can go into a classification layer which is just try to classify out what is present in this uh, image over there or I can find out these uh, coordinates of my region proposals and, and within this particular uh, box what is the particular kind of a proposal I am trying to generate and give out ok now if you look into these uh, example images over there so on the first one you see that uh, there is a car and then it gives out a score what is the probability that it is a car now it is a car with a probability of 1 
so there, there wasn't any ambiguity as such generated then there was a dog but then uh, there was some sort of a confusion so it does not generate a probability of 1 for the dog but it generates a probability of about 0 0.967 over here then there is a horse but then there is a person riding on the horse over here and for that reason uh, the probability of just it being a horse is not that high as 1 but it is 0 0.993 so this this is what you essentially see and even though you have uh, different objects present over there some of these objects are overlapping if you look purely from a bounding box perspective still it can actually find it out so as in over here that there is a uh, cat and there is a dog uh, it finds out actually both of them though the cat has the, there are certain pixels over here of the cat which are overlapping with the pixels of the dog as well okay but nonetheless these are region proposals so there is not much of a difference which comes out over here now uh, this is an interesting one where there is one proposal within another proposal so you have a bus and you have the driver who is driving a bus so the driver is a person and this proposal is located within the proposal for the region of the bus itself then uh, over here i have a boat and these people over here so the people are sitting on top of the boat so person predictions and it also predicts out a boat so this this is how a uh, mechanism of region proposal essentially works out now from your understanding part it's not too complicated because uh, the first part of it is, is still just a simple CNN model which comes out over there. Now what you need to essentially do is uh, as in the activation mapping uh, global activation pooling for finding out activation maps uh, we had truncated out certain convolutional layers to do it. So here also you are going to do down uh, at the terminal convolutional layer and then from there you eject out and uh, per pixel level uh, feature vector and then you create some random number of region proposals created over there which are just rectangular bounding boxes. Now within this box whatever are the pixels you find out what is your average value of the pixel and that is a feature which represents this particular box over there. Now you need to train another classifier so for the ground truth you definitely need your region proposals some sort of a reference region proposal and the object in that region proposal so you cannot just have a overall uh, uh, classification available for that image so this is the first difference which comes down with respect to uh, when we are looking just at global activation uh, pooling however uh, having said that though it is it's much denser data set which you have to create over there in the earlier case of an activation pooling it was much easier uh, but then uh, the only only downside with activation pooling is that you do not get this exact region proposals or how objects are contextually related with each other which is something which comes down over here. Now based on that let us uh, look into few of these results so uh, you, you can see this result where uh, you have a person you have a ho you have two people so one person is standing in front of the horse one person is riding so there is a little girl who is riding on the horse and then you have the horse and then over here you would be seeing uh, some of these cars present over there and typically you can see that the cars aspect ratio is much lesser so the number of pixels the car takes is much lesser than the number of pixels all of these objects are taking so if I was just doing a plain simple classification it would have possibly classified this as a horse and then uh, cars or people would not have figured out but now with these kind of region proposal networks if you can densely annotate what all are the different objects present over there then it can actually classify out and as well as give down a uh, rough location around there so this is trying to solve down two problems in one single shot so while you are trying to give down exactly what is the nature of the scene and, and also where are these uh, objects present over the scene so it is not just what con constitutes the scene but where is the constituent object present on the scene so that is that is the whole purpose of these kind of ones so if you see at a bird then there are this uh, so on this image there is a bird who is uh, perched on the hand of the person and then trying to eat something over here but then there are some birds who are uh, much uh, lower below over there and for that reason these birds are of much smaller size now based on these random proposals which get generated and they are tuned over there in the network so you can actually come down to where is that particular object located and despite it being really small over there you can still find it out then there are two cows over here one is looking down at the camera and trying to really pose out for the image you find out this which occupies majority of the image but then there is also a secondary cow over here and even these kind of networks can find out uh, these smaller kind of cows then if there are people who are overlapping and then um, occluding part of them it, it finds out a pretty good definition of a bounding box as you can see so although this this part of the uh, person in this uh, green shirt who is stand, standing behind is occluded but still the region proposal box is wide enough to get down uh, similarly happens for this uh, gentleman in uh, blue shirt 
that uh, significant part is occluded between these two uh, people over here and still you get down a bounding box which comes out quite efficiently. So one good thing is that while it gives out just bounding boxes and stuff and uh, quite uh, unlike uh, the activation map where if you try to do it with this image you would be getting down certain activation maps but then all of them would be coming down together. So counting down how many pe unique people are there and where they are exactly located what is the geometric span becomes a tougher job. So that is that is not possible within activation pooling in any way. So this is uh, what comes down with uh, our region proposals. Now you can have uh, some of these uh, like really skewed out uh, examples over there one of them is where there is a big car really big or uh, you can have a region proposal which can encapsulate the whole image itself. So for this cat like uh, the whole image is as such the cat. So the region proposal is itself the whole image over there. So there can be these kind of examples as well and it makes it uh, quite easier. It is robust to occlusions uh, to the size of the image to the size of the object over there and uh, agnostic to a fact that it can be um, the whole image itself and still the region proposal is fixed out over there. So these are uh, some of these interesting aspects which go around with the region proposal network. Now based on these we uh, would be solving out uh, so in tomorrow's lecture I would be demonstrating out uh, how to get down activation maps and working down. Now uh, for reducing the complexities involved we are not doing a region proposal network but we will there are plenty of resources to implement a region proposal network as such and work it out and then your activation maps are something which come down as uh, uh, initial start into how to implement these kind of more advanced networks. So with that uh, we come to an end for this lecture stay tuned and thanks.